everyone welcome back to the channel and welcome if you're new my name is Liz and today I just wanted to hop on quickly and do a bit of a how-to video for any of you looking to start Halloween Village over the past few years I've been filming my Halloween tours my village tours and I've noticed some comments from people just saying that they'd love to create a Halloween Village one day so this is my suggestions or tips that I've sort of picked up over the past well 10 years I've been collecting for 10 years uh, of how to start a village and different, you know, fun things that I like to do when creating my display every year. Limax actually sent me five buildings to review for a video, so I will link that below if you want to check out five of the new buildings for 2022. But if you've been subscribed to my channel, you know I've always loved Limax. Limax has my heart. They have lots of variety, and in my opinion, they're the easiest buildings to find. Uh, so that's what we'll be focused on today, but I've loved Limax for years. My very first building was actually a barn. We found at a yard sale and I built my first display just around that one barn. So that sort of leads into the first suggestion which is to have fun. Uh, this shouldn't be a stressful hobby. This shouldn't be a hobby where you feel like you have to run out and purchase a bunch of buildings all at once. I really suggest starting with one theme, picking a theme because there's so many it can feel really overwhelming. So for instance my first piece with the barn I just sort of went with that. I had little hay bales and pumpkins and trees and different pieces to fit that theme but I mean there's so many there's the pirates theme you see sometimes the carnival theme is super popular you've got bars and restaurants zombies witches pumpkin patch haunted houses which is one of my favorites so there's always those pieces you look forward to every year and you're really hoping that Limax comes out with so for me again it's the the haunted mansions that's the first thing I look for those are the pieces that make me the most excited and I also love the bars and restaurants but that's always the first things I look for. So on that note, picking a theme can really help sort of narrow it down and make it a little bit easier to get your village started. So you can always start with buying one or two pieces and create an amazing display just with those pieces, with some accessory pieces. I'll get into all of that in just a moment. Now I do have a little pamphlet here. This is the Michaels 2022 Lee Max little booklet here. Keep in mind, not every single Lee Max 2022 piece is in here. This is just sort of like a fun sampling of some of the buildings, including the Michaels exclusives. Michaels definitely is the largest distributor of Limax. I know that's where a lot of people get their Limax, but there are other ways to find Limax buildings, and I will link that information below in case you're interested in starting your collection. Why don't we take a quick little look at this little booklet? Again, this isn't all of the pieces, so right after we're done looking at this, I'll include some images of some additional pieces, but this gives us a really good idea of some of what's available this year. So, so starting with the first building. Uh, this is actually the Gloom Room Club. This was featured in my review, which will be linked below. But this has a few different themes. So you see what I mean? This has the zombie theme. It's got the music theme. It would fit right in with bars and restaurants. And this is a Michaels exclusive. So this one's really cool. It has lots of music, animation, lights. So really cool. And Limax always has the animated pieces. And then there is the lit bulb pieces. The second one here is the Headstone Mill Brewery. What I did notice is here with the Toil and Trouble Ale House, you could definitely do like almost like a pub crawl theme this year, just with these two buildings. I thought that was kind of cool. Moving down here, we have another Michaels exclusive. This is Raven Hill. And basically what it is, is it's sort of like a perspective because it's made to look like three buildings, but it's actually one piece and it is taller and flat. Uh, you could actually hang this piece on a wall. It's really cool, but there's lots of detail. There's a mountain with some zombies and a graveyard three different buildings. So this is really cool. I do hope that Limax continues to come out with these. I didn't pick this one up yet, but I'm very tempted to go pick that up. So this is actually my favorite piece here. This is the Agatha's Apothecary piece. This one has tons of animation. It's huge. This building is massive. Moving here, we have two pieces right here. If you like jack-o'-lanterns, there you have two buildings there. We have the Crypt of the Lost Pumpkin Souls and the Sugared Pumpkin Candy Shop. And this one's actually battery operated, which is really nice too, because as you collect, you realize, okay, I'm running out of, I'm running out of places to plug things in. So uh, we'll get into that in a moment. But there we have the uh, Michael's exclusive Toil and Trouble Ale House, as well as The Future Looks Dark. It's a tarot reading building. So naturally I loved that one. Uh, so that one was really cool. Then we have the Be Afraid Clocksmith, 
We have That's a Wrap Mummy Mortuary. So that one was really cool if you like the mummy theme. And then we have the Witch's Cottage there. <laughs> into the accessory pieces and table accents. This is really where you can add lots of detail. And this is where the life comes into your building because just getting a building, adding some trees, and then one or two of these pieces, you have a complete scene. You have your very first village. Here we have a animated piece. This is a Michaels exclusive. This one's called Dancing in the Moonlight. Limax will come out with these little countdowns as well where you can turn the numbers uh, to count down for Halloween. They have a little car here. There's the Day of the Dead party, so that's really cool there, and that's new for this year. We have Zombie Wedding Party. This is a set of nine. We have In the Wrong Graveyard. This is another table accent. Then we have The Witch's Gate. And this is where I really have a lot of fun being creative. And that's what I suggest you do as well. Limax makes it very easy because they have everything you need already to create a display. But I'm definitely a fan of adding different things to make it your own. So you can see here they have trees. Every year Limax releases these maple trees. This year they also had the autumn sunrise trees, which sort of look like candy corn. There's always some power adapters available replacement power adapters and of course lights you can see here there are some platforms and there's some moss display mats so all of these things really add a lot of life to your village and you know what Limax has all of these things available for you but you can really get creative with it as well to sort of add to your pieces that you already have so one thing I suggest and this is where the creativity really kind of takes off here and the sky is the limit because if you are really into crafting, this is where you can have a lot of fun. So I suggest while you're walking through the craft store or the dollar store or the thrift shop yard sales, start thinking mini and you'll start seeing tons of different things that you can add. And if you're really creative, you could start having fun with carving foam platforms, adding different heights to your village really sort of adds uh, a lot of depth to the village as well. But uh, working with foam, I mean, there's trees and moss. You can find moss. Of course, Limax has the moss mats, but you can find bags of moss even at the dollar store. I like to use little pebbles to make stone walkways. Around Halloween time, you'll start to see some miniature trees usually at the dollar store. Those work really great. If you really want to have fun and go very in depth with it, you could even look up some tutorials and learn how to use resin. Last year, I made a really cool fishing area with lights and resin and it really looked realistic. I have found fences and walkways at yard sales, uh, but you can make a fence even if you want. There's lots of different things you can add to it to really create a scene and kind of tell a story with your village. One really cool place to look actually is the aquarium section of your pet store. So at the pet store, you'll find a bunch of different uh, statues and different things. I found a spooky tree, which I will include some footage of, but the tree I actually turned into a platform and put a building on top. And that was just in the aquarium section. I added lights, but I've seen some really cool things this year, especially if you do have any of the pirate pieces from Limax. Your aquarium section will have ships and different things that could really add a lot of detail. Okay, so I just wanted to jump on here and show you what I mean with the aquarium section. So this is a tree that I got at PetSmart. And all I did was build this platform on top out of foam. I covered it in moss. This year I did add some paint so it would blend in with the other trees. That box won't be there. I'm going to put a mountain there. But I just wanted to show you what I mean. And then you can even put you know, something like lights in it. I'll just set these here so you can see what I mean. But, you know, in the dark, it really, it looks really, really cool. Like if you put this whole string of lights in or um, the ones I actually got for this tree are from the dollar store. So they're not quite as long, but it just looks really, really cool. And then I just set this building on top. Now, not all of them are going to be sturdy enough to do that. I just made sure that this one could hold a building. I don't know if that's going to be the one I put up there, but this is one of the new ones from this year. But yeah, I just wanted to show you that. And then this, like, this is what I mean as far as really being able to get creative. So I took this candlestick that I had in my basement and I glued on some sticks 
I'm going to carve a mountain out of foam here. And then I have this moon lamp that I set on top and with all of the trees. And then imagine that box is in there. But you see what I mean? Glowing, it looks really, really cool. So that's really how you can add a lot of fun. And this is some foam that I carved. And that's what I mean when you can add a lot of height and dimension. This is one of my all-time favorite pieces, one of the haunted houses. And then I just want to show this area too, and I almost hate to show the village like this because it's not anywhere near being completed, and we are going to do the full tour where we shrink down and do the walking tour of the village again. But just to show you what I mean here, so, so this is actually something from the dollar store that I thought looked like a tree. And then I put the moss down, so you've got your platform, you put a nice tablecloth on or something, then you have your moss, then you can do different walkways, this one's just uh, with pebbles, add some fence, maybe some trees and things, and that's, that's how you do it, you just sort of become a city planner. And there's Glenn enjoying his popcorn. So here is another example of um, how you can sort of display your village. This is a brick mat from Limax. Let's see what's called this uh, landscape accent and this is really cool this one um so you can see the buildings here how they have it but i thought this would look really cool with like all of the pubs and restaurants it sort of just reminds me of like you know an old village and with the brick road so i really like this and this is pretty this is a pretty big piece here okay and then here we've got roads and things so lee max has these little uh, pebble roads and pathways these are really really cool if you were to purchase something like this you could always cut it up too to make roads uh, but one thing I thought I might try this year is I don't know if this is even going to work uh, but I'm going to try and make some roads from sandpaper um, I'll let you know if that works you can see in the village if it does this is some other road I had found at a yard sale my next very important tip is to keep the boxes that your buildings come in it can be tempting to throw these boxes away but then when you go to store away your buildings uh, they're they're more likely to break if they don't have their boxes so the boxes do come with the foam and it's completely formed to your building so that just makes storage um, and clean up a lot easier and it does keep your buildings safe as far as storage goes one thing I actually want to mention is to keep some super glue nearby when you're going to put out your village actually and when you're going to put it away because you know sometimes pieces do snap off these pieces are sturdy very well made but sometimes all it takes is your finger just moving a certain way and a little you know piece or statue might pop off so I just keep some super glue nearby and it's a very easy fix I've seen this across lots of different kinds of buildings so uh, it's just one thing to keep in mind keep an eye out for yard sales and Facebook marketplace as well you will find pieces of course on eBay Bay, but a lot of times the prices are really really expensive so locally you can sometimes find some pieces on that note the Halloween Village community there's so much I mean there's there's channels on YouTube three of my very favorites that I always go back to are spooky villages Halloween villages and I've been really enjoying Halloween villages by Carl he's been doing some really cool vignettes and displays so those are three places to start but I know Facebook has different Halloween villaging groups so it is sort of a fun community so let's quickly talk about your actual village itself building the village putting it all together so you're first going to want to find a table. I've seen them in cabinets on mantles but having a nice table next to the wall uh, where your power outlet is is really a handy place to start. I actually have a platform uh, that we've had for years that sort of is made to look like a mountain that's really cool but to get started you just need a small table close to an outlet. Now, Limax does have a lot of battery operated pieces. As you collect, you might wanna get one of those power bars. I don't recommend turning off your village using the little on and off switch on those power bars. Uh, it is really important to turn them off manually. That's what I've heard, so I always just follow that rule, but the power bars do make it really easy for um, having enough places to plug these buildings in because even if you start with one building, one or two buildings, these collections grow. Before you know it, it's 10 years later and you have a huge village, so keep that in mind. You will run out of places to plug things in. That's why I was really relieved to see some of the buildings are now battery operated. So now that you've got your place to set things up, you've got all of your pieces to get started, 
have fun with it. Make it fun every year. So I always like to put on a Halloween movie. This year when I was getting started, I put on Halloween Town, but you can listen to a podcast, you could listen to music, put on some scary movies or Halloween movies, get your kids involved, get some family or a friend. I always like to make something special to eat or have fun snacks around and I just enjoy. So for me, it does take me a few days to put the entire thing together, but that's because I work on it maybe an hour at a time here and there, but it is so much fun. It is a fun way to be creative and this is your village. You get to be a city planner and have lots of fun with it. So I always organize mine. I've got like the witches area with the enchanted forest. This year that's leading into the graveyard with haunted houses, then into the trick-or-treat neighborhood, and then into the area with all of the bars, shops, restaurants, things like that. So that's it. That's how you get started with your spooky town village. And I really want to emphasize, don't feel like you have to rush out and purchase a bunch of buildings to get started. Starting with one or two pieces, a building and maybe a tree and a few accessory pieces, you'll have an absolutely amazing display uh, that you can gradually add to every year. I've seen some absolutely beautiful displays and my very first display was with one building, a few trees and a little accessories. And you can find them, like I said, at the dollar store, craft stores, and even in your own backyard. Have fun with it, get creative. And I'd love to hear what your favorite pieces were from this year or previous years. Do you have a theme? If you do plan on starting a village, what theme do you want to start with? And I will link a bunch of information below that we talked about in today's video, as well as this year's review video of the five pieces that Lee Max sent me. So I really hope you enjoyed. Thank you so much. And I'll see you very soon with the full Halloween tour.